We're back at Spencerville, where tonight our scoreboard is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. You know what, dear? When they put Zombie Nation on the building, the roof comes off. Well, I'll tell you what. And I looked at the roster of Spencerville. He's starting three seniors tonight, along with his son, who's a freshman, and also another underclassman. This is where he's going to lean on his senior leadership. You know, to make sure that the kids are poised and they play relaxed. Because you got to figure his son's probably amped up really high as well as the other uh, set off. So, yeah, it's going to be an entertaining game. And great, great crowd tonight, partner. Yeah, Mike Fry will be our official. We'll talk to basketball tonight. His partners are Bruce Etzler and Matthew McCollum. And we're waiting for the students to get off the floor and back up into the stands so that we can get this one started. It also gives us a chance to... Talk about domination a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I love that, man. I've been to some places before, and the roof comes off the place, <laughs> and uh, we're about that way. Now, here's our jump ball. Sunoff tips it in the backcourt, and Teeman gets it, goes to the rim, and it gets out of bounds, and it will go off of Teeman's leg. Yes, sure did. Nice strip job right there, trying to think who that was or see who that was. It appeared to be Smith got his hand in there and slapped it off of Teeman's leg. Here's Jefferson looking like it'll come out with a one, two, two, three quarter court trap. This is headline with the basketball, and he will pitch it cross court to Dylan Smith. Now down to the corner. Headline ball fakes goes up from three. It's blocked, but there's a foul. I think they got Miller there on the three point attempt. It appears that would be correct. 19 seconds in, Andrew Miller picks up our first foul, and Josh Headline will go to the free throw line at 88 percent free throw free throw shooter on the season. Makes that one. Yeah, he's personally one of my favorites in the area. I mean, he just does it, does it all. Puts it on the floor, can shoot the three. He can see what he can do here from the free throw line. Second one is good. 16.2 points per game for the senior Josh Henline. He's also made 35 three-point field goals, 35 of the 112 the Spencerville's made on the season. All three of those for him. And now they'll come out with some full court pressure. Three quarter court, man to man. Gallmeyer was bringing the ball across mid court when he was fouled by Owen Sensible. His first foul. This will be team and will enter the basketball now. And Delphus Jefferson averages 49.3 points per game. They give up 46.8. Spencer at 65.1. They give up 48 points per game. Pass inside, ball stolen away. Dylan Cook. Nice play by that young man. Got, got around his. Here's Dylan Smith to the rim. Goes off glass and finishes. Nice dribble drive finish here by Smith. Allmeyer going to be trapped out front. Teeman. Bounce pass, and Jefferson couldn't get that one in. Teeman gets the rebound. He goes back up and finishes. Good Very job. Good, good job by Teeman right there, partner. Staying with it. Here's Sensible trapped on the baseline. He will kick out. Three ball goes up. That three ball will be splashed by Dylan Cook. It's your night, Darren, when you made one all year and you throw one in right away. Well, there's a reason why the kid starts. You know what I'm saying? He may not get a ton of minutes, but the things he does, he does very well for Coach Sensible and the staff. Very quick, 8-2 lead, home team. Trapped in the corner, here's a pass down inside. Little spin move in the lane will go for Carter Agnew. Nice move by Agner. that young man. Talk about pace, though, Darren. It's a Bearcat pace right now. Well, I think that's part of the reason why Jefferson's going to that one, two, two, three quarter court to try to slow him down. Lob pass finishes up in Carter Sutoff's hand, and he finishes. Skip pass. This ball ends up in the hands of Rody. Here's a pass down inside. Team is going to muscle up again. Missed that one. The rebound comes to Smith. Dylan throws it ahead, and pen line shot. Cut the ball a little bit too deep to finish. Jefferson back at you. Pass goes across court, and they finish inside with Agner again. Very unselfish play right now for the visitors. Here's Cook. 
sends the ball. Henline goes to the rim, and a little left-handed scoop shot won't go, but it's tipped back in by Sutoff. Averages eight a game. He's already got four. Here's a lob inside the team, and Sutoff blocks the shot. He had 41 of those in their first 20 basketball games. Got one right there. Who'd the foul go to, Darren? You know what? Yeah. It's like Dylan Cook. I, there you go. Thank you, scorekeeper. <laughs> yeah, I had to look real quick. I, I was impressed with Sudoff's block. He'd come out of yeah. nowhere and pin that basketball. That's the athleticism the kid has really improved on. You can tell he's been in the weight room. He's physically, he's maturing, he's getting taller, he's getting longer. Trent Tiemann, 63% free throw shooter, made the first. And left the second one short and is tipped out of bounds. No, it's not. Saved on the baseline. Good hustle job, Dylan Cook. From Spencerville. In a hurry. Working inside with a little push shot. Nope. Rebound set off. And that one will not go for him. Here comes Jefferson the other way with Rody pushing the basketball. He's going to go all the way to the rim, and his shot will go, and oh, nice save on the baseline by Miller. Here's a three that will go up. Penline rebounds, and will run the other way. Dylan Smith throws it to sense ball in the corner. And line one to get a shot up. Miller defended it pretty well. He did. Yes, he did. Here's Miller the other way. His pass goes cross court, and Tiemann finishes. Well, so much for Jefferson wanting to play a slower <laughs> pace. We're going to come out and run with you. Tempo, tempo. We're both just going to push it, right? 12-9. Sends the ball. Lost the ball on the baseline. Trying to go that direction. Multiple subs in. Looks like we got uh, number 24, Carter Orr. Number five, Evan Osting. Number 10, uh, Caden Carter. And uh, number 11, Cody Bailey. So each team brought a couple in. Almost a steal right away by Carter Orr, making his presence felt. Six, two sophomore. We we'll imagine him and Sudoff together in interior-wise next year. Miller trying to beat pressure. He's going to pull up and be fouled from behind. Almost got an and one. He gets Osting, I believe. That would be correct. Evan Osting gets the third foul for Spencerville in the opening quarter. Andrew Miller, 75% free throw shooter. Did a heck of a job right there with that hesitation dribble, excuse me, and pulling up for the 15-foot jump shot. That Cracked across the wrist by Osting. Pretty smart play. You got that guy on your back, just pull up and let him whack you from behind. Yep. That's what seniors are on scholarship for. And that one as well. His first two points of the game makes it a one point game. Dylan Smith looks, finds Osting who just checked in. Headline makes a nice ball fake, a little push. Rebound, going to be kicked out. Henline's going to get a three look. That one he didn't miss. He's got six in the opening quarter. Stayed with it, but it all started with a second opportunity. Miller kick out. Team is down low again, and will muscle up. Miss that one. The rebound will come to set off. Good defensive play in the backcourt. Cody Bailey. Here comes Jefferson, and the scoop shot's blocked by Sutoff, and then who hit it out of bounds? It will go off of, I believe, Carter Agner. Number 45 will enter. That's Blake Summers, a 6'5 sophomore for Spencerville. That would be the eighth player they put in the game so far. I, I think Agner's intention was to slam it off of the Spencerville's leg out of bounds, and he missed him, and the ball went out of bounds there underneath. Rody back in the game. His team has played seven guys so far in a very rapid five minutes of play here. Osting off the screen. Headline kick out. Osting gets a three look. The rebound comes to Cody Bailey. Been very active here. Just a couple of minutes on the court. 
Dahlmeyer wanted a three and Cho changed his mind. Robbed the team and stolen on the backside, however, by Carter Orr. We'll go the other way. And high off last with a finish. Cody Bailey. That's not Cody Bailey, it's accused to Dylan Smith. Four for him. Timeout Jefferson. 2.24 to go, opening quarter. It's 17 11 home team. You're watching high school basketball on WRSN. Our free throws tonight are sponsored by Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. 17-11, Spencerville. Quick timeout, Jefferson, the first of the game. You know, one thing Spencerville and Coach Sensiball's done with his kids here, he's changed it up defensively in the quarter court. Teeman was very active there early on in the post, so now they're bringing backside help. That, that forced that turnover by Jefferson, that last possession. He's a trap. Skip pass. This is Rogi for three. Teeman tipped it to his teammate, and finishing on inside is Carter Orr. Or Car Caden Carter. Got too many Cadens and Carters. And <laughs> <laughs> Ten line ball fakes and goes to the rim. Contact, gets the call, block. It was Rody got that call. It was Levi's first foul. His headline back to the free throw line. He's already made three of those plus a three ball for six points. And now seven. Lucas Grothaus winner, 5'8 senior. That becomes the eighth Jefferson Wildcat in the basketball game. Here's Henline again. And he makes his fifth free throw of the night for eight points. Team leads by six. Rody. And then they're going to find the point guard, Isaac Gallmeyer. He has to kick it out, but he traveled first. He did. And the good defensive pressure. Since the ball re-enters. It's the little things they do defensively, you know. If, if they can slap from behind, if they can get a quick, you know, reach in there, a bump on the cutter. Anytime you can force that turnover, it's beneficial to you. And that's what Spencerville does, and they do it very well. Osten comes off the screen. Now Osten gets a three look. Rattles around and goes in. Evan Osting's got 12 of those on the year. His first tonight. And it's a nine-point lead with the ball being tipped out of bounds. Really good job by Smith there on the dribble drive and the kick action to the corner, recognizing his teammate on that three-point line. Rody. Team has to go get that one. Wants to pull up from 14 and cannot. Here's a baseline jumper. Goes a little bit hard. Rebound into the hands of Carter Orr. Will go the other way. It's Dylan Smith. Step back three. Rattles that one in. He's got seven in the opening quarter. Yeah, you missed that in-between leg dribble there to set that up. That was a heck of a move, wasn't it? Now they got 25 already. and We're not quite uh, finished with this quarter. Little runner in the lane, that'll be an and one opportunity. Levi Rohde. Appeared to be on 45. What, Summers? Summers. Yep. Nice take there by Rohde, excuse me. Taking that thing in there strong and taking it and finishing at the rim and gonna get the old fashioned and one. Levi, one of the seven seniors for Delphus Jefferson. Shoots 73% from the free throw line. He's got three points in the game now. Dylan Smith. Osting comes off a screen for another three. Back to back, Evan Osting threes. 28 in the opening quarter. They lead by 12. Gallmeyer trying to get something going. Here's a back cut, Rody. Little push shot off glass. That was a nice shot. It was. Nice jump stop. Here's Henline. Wanted to get the last one up in the quarter for the Bearcats. 
Spin move into the lane, a little shot. That was pretty also. Penline's got 10 in the opening quarter. The Bearcats put 30 on the board in the opening quarter. They'll lead by 12 as we go to the second. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Back at Spencerville, where our scoreboard is presented by Lee's famous rescue chicken in Lima, a Wapaki Delta. It's called Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's famous rescue chicken, home style, happens here. Hey, Justin's got 18 on the board, Darren, but Spencerville shooting lights out. They got 30. Uh, and holy smokes, you know, Mr. Osteen comes off the bench, and we had talked about prior to the game. You look at the numbers that their subs put on the board, what if you're a coach, and we've both been there before on scouting reports, how difficult is it going to be to scout Spencerville and try to take away their strengths when you got kids that come off the bench that's capable of doing what they're doing? Well, the interesting thing is they make 5.6 three-point field goals per game due to Bearcats. They've got five in the opening quarter. Here's a deep three. Nobody yeah. heads the other way. Jefferson changed up the defense and went to a flat 3-2 there. Rody finally finds player inside. Nope. Backside rebound, however, will go to. That's Teeman. Yeah, that was Teeman. Miller on the baseline cut just threw it up a little bit too hard, but what a great pass and a cut there. Short cutter, Sutoff. There's a three by Osting. Sutoff almost got that rebound, hustled it, tipped it out to a teammate. Nice play. Carter Sutoff, a little short jumper in the lane. And hit out of bounds. Brody Summers, who wears number 22, checked in. Twin brother Blake had been in earlier. Carter Orr back into the game. Bearcat ball out of bounds. Carter Orr goes baseline. Hustle play by Osting. Here's a three by Sensabaugh. Yeah, that's two threes, partner. They give up off second opportunities. Clark Kellogg hit the nail on the head the other day. He said the best time to make a three is off an offensive rebound, and that's what's happened. Oh, and Sensabaugh has 40 of those in game number 21 now. 13-point lead, Bearcats. Inbound comes into the hands of Agner. Rody comes off a screen. Pulls up from 17. Sutoff tips the ball into the teammate Orr's hands. We'll go the other way. Penline gets a three out of the corner. They got another one. He's got 13 already. His team's got seven made three-point field goals. Jefferson timeout. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Our free throws tonight are sponsored by Matt's Heating and Cooling. It's your home in the energy efficient zone. Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. Mark Shine, Derek Gilbert. Well, Darren, they got 36 on the board right now, and we played not quite 10 minutes. Well, bench help, execution, they get it out. They know where their spots are on the floor. They play so well together, and like you said, they're making shots. When they make shots, they are dangerous with a capital D. Seven made three-point field goals. There's 21 of their 36 already. Allmeyer finds Rody. See what Jefferson comes up with after the timeout. Allmeyer. Bearcats, man to man. Patient possession this time. Rody at the top of the circle. Teeman. Rody gets a three. That's what they wanted coming out of a timeout. 19th three-point field goal of the season for Levi Rohde. Good execution and patience right there by the visitors. Sutoff in the short corner. 
Shots a little bit hard. Good check out inside. Sure was. Agner and Teeman. This is Gallmeyer. Three-point field goal top from him. Bounces out. Rebound, however, into the hands of Agner, and he will draw a foul. I think that was Sudoff got him with the push. His first. Five different Bearcats have a single foul in the opening half. Number 10, Caden Carter will inbound to basketball. Teeman works the lane. Patient possession again. Bounce pass across the lane and under a whole lot of traffic. Guess who? Yeah. Carter Agner tried to muscle that one up through three different Bearcats and had not a very good angle. He's trapped behind the backboard as well, but the ball stays with Jefferson. Yep, Mr. Sudoff got a piece of the action right there to the basketball for another block. Andrew Miller working the lane, spin move, and Sudoff got that one. Bounce pass across the lane. And Sudoff got another one, but he'll get a foul call on that one. Carter Sudoff will get foul number two. And looks like that will bring in Blake Summers to replace him. Pretty confident young man with his ability, you know, and timing to block shots, huh? Hagner will go to the free throw line. Averages nine points per game on our match heating and cooling free throw. Fifth point for him tonight. Here he is. Blake Summers into the game. Yeah, Agner did a nice job. 59% on twos. A couple numbers that stood out, Mark, was the ability to shoot twos for a team. Spencerville was at, uh, what did we say, 53-4? That ball's banged out front. Knocked away by Orr. It will go the other way. A little scoop shot underhand of Bridey. It will go for Dylan Smith. He's got nine in the game now. And Spencerville at 52-3. So, yeah, they're, both teams are capable of shooting the ball inside that arc at a high percentage. A pair of high ball screens. There's team in the low post. And guess what? Without uh, Carter Sutoff in the game, he's able to get loose. He's got nine now. Covers a lot of space with his length. 6-4 team and averages 12 a game, five and a half rebounds. Here's a left-handed shot that will go up from the arc. We'll head the other way with Miller. Pull up jumper from 15. That wouldn't go. But the ball is safe. Knocked back to bounds by Agner. And then Teeman muscles up. That got blocked by Summers. And the piece of officiating. Not quite sure who hit it. Did a little conference to give the ball to Jefferson. Yep, that's a good piece of officiating. One of those bang bang plays inside. Get some help from your partner. Agner looking for somebody. Here he pass out on top to Bailey. Here's Miller going inside. Three ball will go up from Caden Carter. Team and rebounds. And that ball stolen away. Sensu ball will go the other way. Summers three. Blake Summers continues the shooting parade for his team tonight. His 10th of the year. Instead of settling for a good shot, they got a great one right, right there. The ball on. Attempted going to the goal, Cody Bailey and Caden Carter couldn't match up together. The ball will go out of bounds and go to Spencerville with three minutes to go in this one. There's Dylan Smith. Headline. Ball's tipped loose inside. Ends up in the hands of Jefferson. It's two on two the other way. Miller wants to go to the glass. Shot a little bit hard. And rebound goes to Dylan Smith. Smith all the way to the rim. And what do we got? Offensive foul, Dylan Smith. Got 
turnover will give the ball to Jefferson. And Andrew Miller will advance the ball. His team trails by 15. Picks it up and finally finds Agner. Not a good place to pick it up, is it? Got to make it a penetrating move here. Here's Bailey. Now Agner again. Spencer got him pushed way out on the floor. I tried to wrap it around. Agner did, did catch the ball. Yeah, sure I wasn't did. sure he was able to get to it. He did. Agner's got seven in the game now. Nice looking sophomore. Here's Summers again. And Smith hustles into the rebound. Good job chasing that one down. Sensiball ball fakes. Throws a runner up, but he will bank it in off glass. Oh, and Sensiball has five all of his quarter. Nice finish there by the freshman. A lot of good freshmen in our area right oh, now. Oh, really good. He's one of them. Agnew. Teeman. Teeman pull up three. Oh, good roll for him. And I think Agner knocked it out of bounds. He did. Summers went after it, and Agner knocked it out of bounds from behind. Gallmeyer back in the basketball game. Lucas Grothaus come, comes into the game. Levi Rohde enters the game. Coach jetting off with a minute and 11 to go here, trying to cut into this very active Spencerville lead right here. They're going to go man, too. Smith splits the defense. Almost had an and one opportunity. We'll go to the free throw line anyway for a match hitting and cooling free throws. The foul to Andrew Miller. He becomes the first Jefferson Wildcat with a pair of fouls. Actually, partner, I think it's Teeman. Was it Teeman? Yeah, it was it Teeman. It was. Okay, I, I misread the official signal. Thank you, Darren. Teeman. First foul then. Dylan Smith. 64% at the charity strike. Stays at 15 points, under a minute to go. Miller comes off the screen. Here's Rohde, made a three from there a moment ago. Yeah, they're just daring you to put it on the floor to try to dribble, penetrate, because there's going to be help there. Ball's tipped from behind by Henline. It will stay here with Jefferson with 28 seconds to go. Right idea by Gallmeyer there, trying to get to the bucket. He's got to protect a little bit more. Lob out to Gallmeyer. He pulls up from 15. Teeman gets that one blocked as he fought for the offensive rebound, then it got knocked away. Coach Sensiball says, we want last shot of the opening half. He's got the ball in Josh Henline's hands. Henline from 15. Got it. Let's see if it counts. I'm assuming it does. And it's going to be an and one for him. Yeah, according to the official, there was some contact with a hand on the head area. Heck of a play there by the senior. 15 points in the opening half. This is his sixth free throw opportunity. And that one will roll in for him, 16 for him. 18-point lead, and here's our warning. Leave the basketball alone when it goes through the rim. Miller works, works, and a shot by Rohde, missed. Rebound comes to Blake Summers. Bearcats, 46, Jefferson, 28 after 16 minutes. Second half action coming back in as she watches high school basketball, WLS. Back at Spencerville, our scoreboard is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima. Wapak in Delta is called Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. 
Spencerville quarter scores of 30 and 16. Jefferson quarter scores of 18 and 10. Josh Henline has 16. Dylan Smith has nine. On the other side, Trent Tiemann has nine, and Levi Rohde has eight. It's an 18 point lead, Darren. This is going to be very difficult for Jefferson to get back into. They just want to have a really good third quarter, make it competitive. Yeah, they're going to have to exert a lot of energy to get into this 18 point lead. You know, hats off to the two seniors, Henline and Smith, 25 in the first half of the 46. That is what your seniors are supposed to do. And they come out and showed it. And that's why they got 46 the first half. And, and you were very observant, Darren, when you said, you know, Dylan Cook started out with a three ball, too. That's not his role necessarily, but he helped get him going as well. So the three seniors really contributed here early on for Spencerville and have continued into the quarter number two. Here's Tiemann inbound. And Gallmeyer. Spencerville's been man to man the whole game. They trapped a little bit out of it a few times. Here's a lob pass. Gallmeyer off glass. Nope. And who hit it out of bounds? It looked like it was hit out of bounds by Tiemann. Nice set call right there. That's probably one that if Gallmeyer had to do it over again, he'd have brought it down and gathered himself to improve his angle. Dylan Smith with the basketball. This is Owen Sensiball. And Josh Henline comes off the screen. Sensiball wanted to go baseline, couldn't get there. Carter Sutoff's in the back of the basketball game. He wears number 23 for Spencerville. He's got a couple of fouls. Rebound into the hands of uh, Carter Agner, 6'3", sophomore. Here's a pass inside, and Tiemann will finish, much like he did in the opening half. He's got 11. Good job by the big fella. Rim running right there from one end of the floor to the other. Got rewarded with a pass and a finish. Since the ball trying to get in the lane and cannot, pretty good defensive effort. Headline deep three. Brody checked out well and secured the rebound. Agner off a screen. Here's Teeman. This three ball will go up by Andrew Miller. A little hard, and the rebound came into the hands of Carter Agner, but we had a foul. I think they got Cook with a push on the rebound. That is correct. Dylan Cook now has a pair of fouls. Strong young man. Uses those big arms of his and his thick legs, strong legs there, and displaced his defender. Brody takes a jumper from the baseline. Teeman over there. Cook for the rebound, and then wants to go off class, and <laughs> Cook just rode him right out of there. You're not going to the rim, young man. Sorry. Yeah, what's that yeah. word? Displaced? Well, Dylan Cook just <laughs> displaced Tiemann, who gets to go to the free throw line. He's one for two there this evening. He's got 11 points in the game. And now 12. That will bring in Carter Orr, the 6'2 sophomore, will replace Dylan Cook. Here's Tiemann again. Made both of those. The first four points of the second half go to Trent Tiemann, cutting the lead to 14. Sutoff down inside. And he lost the basketball trying to make a post move. Had the right idea. Wanted to use a little crab dribble with a drop step there and spin and lock him. Unfortunately, dribbled it out of bounds. I like that, Darren. That's good coach talk. Thanks. Grab dribble. That's, that's really good. I like that. Oh, oh nice Yeah, take. how about that? Really strong move to the goal that time by Gallmeyer. His first basket of the evening. And the lead is 12. Well, certainly a good start for Jefferson doing what they have to do, trying to get back in this thing a little bit. Here's Sensiball. His layup from a distance goes. Owen oh, Sensiball's got seven. Pretty move there by that young man. Up, up over the outstretched hands of Agner. Miller, one lob pass, couldn't. Now he gets a three look. Andrew Miller shots a little hard. Agner rebounds. I like that, Southmore. Oh, I do, too. And he will be fouled. This I will go to too. Carter Sutoff, his third foul. So a couple of Bearcats now, post players, have picked up fouls, although as deep as they are. 
Not a real problem. Nothing would be better for Jefferson and the staff than to make a little bit of a run here and make Coach Sensible take a timeout. That's the eighth point for Carter Agner. And uh, Blake Summers, who wears number 45, checks in, as does number five, Evan Osting. It's been a Bearcat team that's gone nine deep this evening. You got to like what you see over there. Coach Sensible communicating with Sutoff, trying to get these things corrected with the big fella. Uh, Rody gets the rebound. Here's Teeman. Baseline shots blocked inside, however, by Orr. Here's Henline, and now Orr. Got a guy open in the corner, but he tried double to ball dribble, fake and he? double dribble it, yep. Thought about throwing to Sensible, then realized the lane was open and just turned it over. 13 yeah. point lead. Somebody jumped the pass the lane, didn't they, out there mm. for the kick to the corner? Here's Gallmeyer. Lob pass, they got it this time, and got a basket. They run that play several times. Gallmeyer has four now in the quarter. Oh, what a pass. Super pass that time from Carter Orr to Blake Summers. Yeah, found the lane, took it down the lane, drew the defenders over, and like you said, a little wraparound, excellent pass. Here's Rody. Spencer Bill very content. Any dribble handoff or ball screen, they're going to switch everything. Rody gets a three out of the corner. <laughs> ball goes off the hands. Rody went and got it, and then gets right back into the hands of Osinger. Couldn't finish in traffic. Scramble play. And what do we got? Looks like Blake Summers had the basketball and will be fouled by Andrew Miller. That will be Andrew Miller's third foul. And popping up off the bench to replace him is Cody Bailey. Yeah, you got to love Rody's effort on the floor right there. He just unfortunately couldn't secure it and get it to a teammate. Or working inside. Good footwork, but his shot wouldn't go for him. Liked his footwork. Shot was just a little bit hard. Here's Gallmeyer. His team's trails by 13. Teeman gets a three. Trent Teeman. 16 in the game for him. He's got just four made three-point field goals on the season. That was a big one. Cuts the lead to 10. Here's Dylan Smith. Summers keeps it alive, but only momentarily is. Caden Carter finally got the rebound. He can go under double figures. Yeah, I think Coach Sensible is trying to let him play through without having to take that time out. We'll see what happens if Jefferson comes away with a two or three on this possession. Long three bounces around. Very active Carter Orr with that rebound, throws it ahead, and we're going to get a foul by Cody Bailey as he was trying to chase down Evan Osting. What a great outlet pass. Typically, you see him throw to their teammates. So he threw that one ahead and let his partner run underneath it, which would be Mr. Osting. He chased it down. He's going to get two free throws, but it all started with that outlet pass. Evan Osting made a pair of three point field goals in the opening quarter. He's a 64% free throw shooter. That is point seven for him. Comes Sutoff back in the game along with Henline. Agner rebounds. He's had a bunch of them tonight, yes, he has. He? I like that sophomore. Going to write mm -hmm. him down and keep his name in my mind for the future. Gallmeyer. And then the handoff to the rim. And good finish at the rim. Caden Carter's got four in the game. Good job by and the long man. pass hit the sideline. It's a nine-point lead. Here comes Jefferson and a Spencerville turnover. It was 18 at half. They've cut it in half. Gallmeyer off a screen. 
Here's Gallmeyer for three. Splash. Wow, what execution right there by Jefferson. Gallmeyer's got seven all in this quarter. The lead is six. Orr stops the momentum. Big, big, big shot right there. Carter Orr's first basket of the night. Much needed by Spencerville. And got a held ball, which will favor Spencerville as Cody Bailey slipped. His coach was trying to get a timeout and couldn't before the held ball occurred. Arrow favors the home team. Yeah, that was just an unfortunate break. He slipped on the floor and couldn't get the timeout. Dylan Smith. Headline, 16 in the opening half, scoreless in quarter three. Sunoff got open on a headline screen and made a shot. That was good execution. Sure was. He's got six now, and the lead is back to ten. Bearcats answered. Yeah, they didn't settle for perimeter. They went right down inside where they were highly effective and shoot high percentage numbers. Teeman backs in and will get called for an offensive foul. Trent Teeman, his second. Nice defense there by Mr. Orr, giving up his body. There's another sophomore I'm going to keep in mind. Oh. Talk about an upside. Here he is right here with the basketball. Well, you might as well put Blake Summers you down know. there, too. <laughs> Headline three. He might have been scoreless in the quarter, but he changed that. If you're marking players in circle, you know. Yeah. Big shot right there, another big, big shot. 19 in the game, Josh Henlein. He's got three made three-point field goals. That's the ninth one of the game for Spencerville. Under a minute to go. And Agner lost it. Who hit it? He did. Again, Orr making a defense presence right there, getting the deflection, getting his hands on that ball. And Agner. Rolled it off his leg out of bounds. Got it to five, but the last seven points of the game have gone the way of Spencerville. I guess they got to six, didn't they? It was 51-45, yes. they got to six. Skip pass, Osting for three. Battle for the rebound, and thrown inbounds to Jefferson. Three on three the other way. Teeman, Cody Bailey, and Steele, Big Dylan Smith. By the senior. Dylan Smith fouled from behind by Cody Bailey. And we're going to have some discussion about that one. I think the question is, was there an effort for the basketball? And we're going to call it a shooting foul. So Dylan Smith, who has nine points in the game, will go to the free throw line for a pair with 7.8 seconds to go. Blake Summers about to check in. Tenth point for Dylan Smith. Nine of those came in the opening half. Lots of subs checking in. Looks like Gallmeyer is going to enter as well. Coach Sensball getting a couple of defenders in the game, and Coach Jetting off getting some offense in the game with 7.8 to go. That ball's tipped out of bounds. Will be tipped out of bounds by Carter Sutoff. Yeah, he tried to convince the official, didn't he? Smart Got play by that young man. Good play by Dylan Smith, taking some time to get this one over midcourt. Rodies. Couldn't get it off in time. That was a really nice defensive play that time by Dylan Smith. His team will lead by 14 as we head to the fourth. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Our free throws today have been sponsored by Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. 
Jefferson with 17, Spencerville with 14 in that quarter, but it was an 18-point lead at halftime. It'll be a 14-point lead as we head to the fourth. Josh Henline has 19, 10 for Dylan Smith, and 16 for Trent Tiemann, eight apiece, Carter Agner and Levi Rohde. You know what was really impressive, Mark? Coach Sensen Ball and his coaching staff didn't get excited. They maintained their composure, let his kids play through it, they maintained their composure on the floor because they've seen the actions of their coaching staff, and they, they fought off having to use a timeout. Here's Rody. Pass was tipped away as they tried to get inside to Agner. Headline out front, pressuring Rody. This will be Rody for three. And it goes over the top of the backboard. Good execution there by the Wildcats. Nice open look down there in the corner. Just couldn't knock it in. Saw Patrick Cameron here a little while ago shooting some highlights. That's going to be a foul that will go to Cody Bailey. Patrick Cameron, of course, she's an 18 in the sports report every Friday night. That's a great job. Oh, boy. It? Check us out through the tournament. Lots of action going to be taking place over the next four weeks. Smith, headline. Well, when you make that many threes, it opens up your drive to the goal. 21 in the game for him. Here's a long pass ahead. Tiemann. Tiemann scores. Boy, he does one thing very well. He runs the floor exceptionally hard, and he's quick. Bucket to bucket. 18 for him in the game. Playing his final regular season game. Set off inside. Gets some backside help from Tiemann. So he bounces across to Dylan Smith. Smith's got 12. That's a nice pass. I'm really impressed with their ability just interior-wise. So unselfish. Make the simple pass. They well, only turn the ball over nine and a half times a game. <laughs> Jump shot by Andrew Miller. He's got four. The home team has not won in this contest between these two teams since, night, uh, since 2018. Looks like that might be changing this evening unless Jefferson can put something together. He races 14-point deficit. Not with Dylan Smith going to the goal for point, points 13 and 14. Yeah, you can sort of see the defensive pressure starting to be turned up by Spencerville, and you can see it in their eyes that they can – that, that conference championship is right there within the grasp. Mm -hmm. Teeman with another three ball, 21 for him tonight. He's got a couple of three balls. He only had three of them coming into this tonight the whole season. What's that Lee Corso saying? Not so fast, my friend. There you go. Rebound, Rody. It's a 13 point game. Rody to the rim, and we'll draw a foul. Media timeout. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back at Spencerville High School. Home team leads by 13. Our scoreboard is presented by Lee's Rest Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Rody trying to get a shot off inside against good pressure. That will roll out. A couple different Bearcats had a chance to snag, snag that rebound. Dylan Smith did it. He goes all the way to the basket and will bounce one in. 16 for him. Two and a half above his average on the season. My goodness, <laughs> look at Mr. Orr going bugging the bugging defensively, getting deflections. Teeman will take a chance to go off glass and we'll go to the free throw line. Our free throw sire sponsored by Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimates. That foul went to Carter Sutoff. It's his fifth this evening. He's going to foul out with six points, several rebounds, and a bunch of block shots doing his job tonight, Darren. Yes, uh, he does what he does best. It's unfortunate he got his fifth here with five minutes to go, but I'm sure Coach Sensenball has enough confidence in his bench and his personnel as well as Mr. Sutoff and his teammates to... 
cover his last five minutes of not being in the game. Tiemann has 21 in the game, and now 22. He's had a really nice game, 10 sure above has. his average. And the lead is 14, as we're under five minutes to go, and Smith against the zone. Splash. 19 for him, 10 in the second half. Just calmly took his time against his own. Darren just buried it. Sure did. Yep. 17-point lead. Bearcats with 70. They averaged 65 on the season. Here's Teeman inside again. Ball fakes. And tipped in by Agner. He's got double figures with 10. And then there's a steal. Miller with the basketball, and he couldn't control it. You know, Dylan Smith, that three he just hit, partner, that's only his ninth made three on the season. But, boy, he looked good on that, didn't he? He, he did. State yeah. released it. Here's Dylan Cook back in the game. All three seniors are on the floor right now for Coach Sensiball, and got to figure he'll give them a chance to let those guys play together for a couple minutes. Good Here minutes on by Orr. Senior night, Henline missed, got his own rebound. Josh Henline right back up, good persistence. Henline's got 23. Gallmeyer, a little floater on the baseline. That was pretty. He's got nine now. Sends the ball, heads baseline, gets doubled up there. Smith, reverse layup. He's got 21 now. My goodness. That was pretty. Yes, it was. Finished with the left hand, protected the basketball from his teammate or from his defender and finished it. 11 in the quarter here for Dylan Smith. And that pass goes awry, out of bounds, back to Spencerville. 17 point lead, 316 to go. There's no admission fee to watch this game, but there is a cost for TV44 to broadcast it to you. Say thanks to viewer support of TV44 by sending them a financial gift right now. TV44 relies on donations of viewers to enable airing of this game and other locally produced programming. Donate now by visiting WTLW.com and click donate here. That was Henline scored his 24th and 5th points of the game. Exactly three minutes to go in this one. Dylan Cook picks up foul number four. Yeah, guess who ran the floor there from bucket to bucket yeah. again? That was Mr. Team. Team and, and yeah, him and him and Cook are chatting with one another. Rody. Time we get a dead ball or a free throw. We'll try to give you the tournament situation for both of these schools. Miller, a little floater in the lane. Andrew Miller's got six. There's a long pass ahead that's stolen by Rody. Nope. Sense ball gets it back. Smith, reverse layup, and we'll draw a foul that time on Levi Rody. Spencerville was the number two seed in the D3 tournament. They will play the winner of Columbus Grove and Van Buren. They put, those two teams play on the 21st, and Spencer will play the winner on the 24th. That'll be 6 p.m. in Miller City. And then they will move on, or whoever wins that will move on to the Lima Senior District, which is March 3rd and 4th. Smith makes the free throw, 22 for him. Delphus Jefferson, they're in the D4 sectional. They will play Fort Jennings on the 22nd at 6 p.m. Team they have beaten before, 59-46. The winner will get the second seed, Kaleida. And that will be on the 24th. Yeah, and that's a team that's playing yeah. really, really well. Yeah, Dylan Smith with 23 now as Dylan Cook gets an award, ovation for his final senior moments on this court. Teeman. Teeman tries to go baseline, cut off by Orr. Miller, who continually attacks the paint. Henline rebounds, and we're going to run the other way. And we're going to get a foul. No, we're going to get a timeout, aren't we? Coach wanted to get uh, some players in the games, didn't he? 
Yeah, I think he's taking a timeout to get, yep. get the seniors out. He is going to get Dylan Smith out. Dylan Smith had a 23-point game this evening. He's going to get Josh Henline out. A 25-point game for him. Those two, along with Dylan Cook, playing their final game in the very appreciative crowd here this evening for a final game here on this floor. We're going to try to get an interview with Coach Sensball when this one comes to an end. See if we can get down on the court and get that taken care of, and hopefully we'll be able to do so. Just under two minutes to go in this contest. Out of town or can't get WSN? WSN is now streaming our broadcast channel 24-7 on Roku and Apple TV. Down our Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. $100 allows you to watch anywhere in the world. You can visit app.wsn.tv to sign up. Here's Blake Summers to inbound the basketball. I've got number 22, Elijah Petty, in the basketball game. He's guarding number 22, and that would be Brody Summers out front. Let's see if we get anybody else who just checked in the game a moment ago. And Summers will roll one in. Brody's got a basket. Nice pass, interior-wise, and nice finish by Brody. Well, it was Lucas Grodos who tried to get to the rim, tried again, couldn't get there. Here's Petty, just checked in a moment ago. Patient possession by the team wearing red this evening. Here's Gallmeyer trying to get inside. This three is going to go up. Gallmeyer gets the offensive rebound, though, on the shot by Bailey. He's had a nice game tonight. He has, hasn't he? Very active player. Petty posted up down inside, and Summers tried to knock it away, and Brody will get called for the foul. Team foul seven, so head to the free throw line for Matt Heating and Cooling free throws. You get a couple more Jefferson subs in the game. Mason Wiltsey checks in. He wears number two. As does number 40, Caden Carter. And I think we're getting some Bearcats into the basketball game as well. Brady, Brady Smith is into the game. Isaiah Stewart. Thank you, Isaiah Stewart. Looking to see what the second number was. Is number two. Michael Woods, who wears number 33 into the basketball game. With 62 seconds to go. There's Petty at the free throw line. Banks it in. By golly, it's his first free throw of the season, too, partner. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Nice job by that young man. That second one's going to be a little bit easier. Summers will check out of the basketball game. That would be Blake Summers. Brother Brody's on the first hash mark line to rebound this one if it misses. Got them both. You are correct. Bank one in, swish one oh, in. That second one was so much yeah. easier for that young man. Nice job. The steal by Bailey. And a little Euro step layup for Bailey. Cody's in the books now with two. Nice finish there by the young man. Nice steal. Lucas Grothaus. Jumped out to guard the basketball right there. This is Stewart. Ball's tipped loose inside. Who had it out of bounds? Looks like number 40, Kellen Carter, slapped it off of Summers and will go the other way. Smart basketball play there by Good that play. young man. 6'3 freshman is Kellen Carter. And what, well, we got another sub coming into the game. This will be Vinnie Murray, a 5'9 junior. Going to get Mr. Bailey. Both coaches getting a lot of guys into the game right now. Here's Mason Wilson. High ball screen for him. Here's Murray, just checked in a moment ago and almost rolled in a three. Summers rebounds. And that will bring this one to an end. The Spencerville Bearcats will put 80 points on the board this evening. And they will take an 80 to 63 victory over the Delphus Jefferson Wildcats. And Darren, they already had the league wrapped up. 
but tonight was an exclamation point. They're not sharing it with anybody. Yes, it was. And, you know, they went through that third period roll right there and give Jefferson a lot of credit. And I think they had to exert too much energy. I think the first quarter did Jefferson in, giving up 30, and they just couldn't overcome that. But you know, credit to Coach Sensible and his staff for, for hanging in there and playing through that slow uh, long period of the third quarter and then you know seniors do what they do best and they were leaders uh, throughout the contest especially in that third quarter and they finished it off congratulations to them for winning the NWC title Jefferson will finish the regular season at 11 and 11 they will be five and three in the Northwest Conference they had quarter scores tonight of 18 10 17 and 18 for their 63 points they were led in scoring tonight by Trent Tiemann, 22 points. That's 10 above his average. Carter Agner had 10 tonight as well, which is right at his average of 9-plus points per game. On the other side, Spencerville Bearcats. They will go to 19-2 on the season. They will, of course, win the Northwest Conference with an 8-0 record, the first time they have won the conference since back in. Where did I write that down at? Uh, they won it in 2016-17 when they were also 8-0. This will be the ninth conference championship for the Spencerville Bearcats. Quarter scores for them, 13, 16, 13, and 21. They were led in scoring by Josh Hentline with 25, Dylan Smith with 23. But really, Darren, a very solid all-around effort from everybody from the Bearcats this evening. I think it started in the first quarter. Like you said, you got Mr. Cook, you know, who's accepted his role in the program for Coach Sensible and his teammates hit a big three there in the first quarter. They shot the ball exceptionally well, and when they shot the ball that well, the defense picked it up, and they got that 30 points, and it was just too difficult for Jefferson to cover. I thought Jefferson did a lot of good things tonight. I think Coach Jettinghoff has some outstanding players. I think they could be a surprise. You know, 11 and 11, you know, finishing in the conference this year, what, six and three? That's, that speaks volumes of their team, and, and I think they've got a chance to, 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 to win a couple games in this tournament coming up. JV game tonight was won by Spencerville, 53-42. We want to thank our scoreboard sponsor tonight. That was Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delpus, and our free throw sponsor tonight, which has been Matt's Heating and Cooling. The athletic director here, Kelly Williams got, a, Williams, got a set up this evening. Our crew tonight has been Cameron Stanton and Stephen McNeil here at Spencerville. Back at the station, Zach Keith will edit this all together. Thank Darren as well. We're going to head down to the court and see if we can get an interview with Coach Sensible. Kind of busy right now with net cutting, but if we can get him, we will. You've been watching high school basketball on WOSN. <laughs>